As someone who has suffered from bouts of insomnia and difficulty sleeping myself, I know that sleep and getting a good night's sleep begins in the morning. I also know that insomnia is not something that is fixed overnight. It's a process and we have to try to break the cycle of insomnia or sleep disruption. So as we go through the slides today, please remember that this is a process. It's one step at a time. Your sleep is not going to change overnight, but it can change slowly, one step at a time. Collaborators on this video include Ashley Chang and Joel Chern, both from Vancouver, BC. So as you can see from this slide, not getting enough sleep or difficulty sleeping is a very, very common problem in Canada. Sleep can be divided into phases known as REM and non-REM sleep. REM sleep is associated with dreaming and memory consolidation. Non-REM sleep is associated with restoration, including increased blood flow, relaxation, repairs of the body, and growing tissues. Sleep is very important for learning and memory, brain plasticity and detoxification, body restoration, and enhancing immune defense. Seven to nine hours of sleep is ideal up to the age of 64, and if you're over 65, seven to eight hours should be sufficient. So what is the relationship between sleep and the immune system? We can see that with better sleep, we have reduced infection risk, improved infection outcome, and even better vaccination responses. Sleep disturbances, however, lead to a weakened body defense system, increased risk for infection, and increases in inflammation. What happens to our bodies when we don't get enough sleep? It's not just that we're tired. There's a lot going on internally that we don't see, but we do feel it. Factors such as more sedentary time, chronic stress, poor mental health, and some medications can leave us at greater risk for some of these chronic diseases, which can also lead and be complicated by some of the more common sleep disorders. Insomnia, restless leg syndrome, sleep apnea, and narcolepsy are common sleep disorders. If you think that you may be suffering from one of these disorders, please speak with your pharmacist or your physician. Your sleep is affected by many different hormones in the body that are responsible for many different things. We're going to talk about a few of them. I'm going to start with leptin and ghrelin. I have no idea what leptin and ghrelin are. Leptin is responsible for the feeling of fullness and reduces the desire to continue eating. Ghrelin causes feelings of hunger and is highest before meals. With a lack of sleep, we see increased ghrelin and decreased leptin, which leaves us hungry, hungrier and with less feeling of fullness after eating. One thing you can do is try to have a glass of water before you do need to eat something if you're tired, and that might just do the trick. Next, we have cortisol and melatonin. Cortisol has a stimulating effect, which is highest in the morning and during periods of high stress. Melatonin responds to decreased light, in increases sleepiness, and is highest in the evening. Blue light from electronics, some ceiling lights, and stress causes an increase in cortisol and a decrease in melatonin, which affects our normal sleep cycle. So what are some of the complications of poor sleep? When we're not sleeping properly, we have higher levels of ghrelin and decreased levels of leptin, which gives us less feeling of fullness and higher cravings for sugary foods where we're more likely to overeat. On the other hand, we also have an increase in cortisol and a decrease in melatonin. This leads to poor quality of sleep, poor memory, and less repair of body tissues. These combined lead to higher incidence of inflammation, pain, risk of chronic illness, and susceptibility to infection. So now we know that not having enough sleep has a huge effect on our bodies, including on our immune system. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll give you some strategies and some tips on how to get a better night's sleep and how to break the cycle of poor sleep habits. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe to Friendly Pharmacy 5 on YouTube or like us on Facebook. You can also join our immune strengthening support group on Facebook. It's free to join. There is no cost to anyone. This is being sponsored by a COVID-19 Responsive Neighborhood grant. This community support group 
is to help give you support as you strengthen your immune system with our video series over the coming months. On our support group, you can ask questions, you can discuss with other members what some of your strategies are, and there will be extra content there as well for viewers who are looking for more information. When you're ready, you can proceed to part two of our immunity and sleep series. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye.